probably spent hours squinting at your screen, fingers dancing on the keyboard like some sort of keyboard maestro. And when that final line of code locks into place like a perfect puzzle piece, <sighs> uh, the satisfaction is unbeatable. But today we're talking about something that might hit a little close to home. You see, being a programmer isn't all caffeine-fueled coding sprees and victorious fist pumps. There's a darker side to it too. In this world of rapid technology evolution, some programmers thrive while others, well, they struggle to keep up. In this episode, we're going to dive into some red flags that might suggest you're headed down the path of becoming a bad programmer. Ouch, I know, but stay with me. This could be the wake-up call you didn't know you needed. So let's dive right in, starting with a real head-scratcher. Repeated Googling for similar problems. Let's face it, Stack Overflow is a programmer's best friend. But there's a fine line between referencing a solution and relying on it entirely. I mean, if you find yourself Googling how to check if a file exists using shell one day, then how to check if a file doesn't exist using shell just two days later? That's a red flag, my friend. As programmers, we're supposed to learn and build on our knowledge. When the work volume grows and your boss's expectations with it, you can't afford to be in the snails category, perpetually relearning the basics. So if you're depending on Google for every problem, it might be time for some serious self-reflection. And excessive meetings. Now don't get me wrong, meetings are necessary. They can help you understand your requirements better, but are you scheduling meetings after meetings only to make zero progress in your code or design? That's a telltale sign you're not grasping the underlying problem. Remember, being productive isn't about being busy, it's about being effective. If you're draining everyone's time without making progress, that's a clear sign of inefficiency. And let's be real, nobody likes an office vampire. There's just so much sun in here. Overdoing documentation, diagramming and documenting, can be a godsend for complex problems, but spending excessive time on this for obvious tasks? That's a slippery slope towards inefficiency. If you're pestering your teammates for flowcharts before you write your first line of code, it shows you're not building on existing solutions. And let me tell you, a programmer who can't or won't build on existing work is, well, not a great programmer. Emailing everyone all the time? Nothing says I'm lost, quite like a barrage of emails to everyone on your team. If you're misdirecting questions, you're not only reducing team productivity, but also muddling the sense of responsibility within the team. As programmers, we need to understand the principle of accountability. Your mistake might just be setting a precedent for the junior devs on your team. And let's face it, nobody wants an email army always reinventing the wheel. Innovation, great. Research, fantastic. But spending months developing a solution for a problem that already has a one keyword Google search fix? Not so much. Being a valuable programmer is all about balancing innovation with pragmatism. If you're delaying projects due to an obsessive need for originality, you might be becoming a liability to your team. Anxious coding. Here's a programmer who's the opposite of our previous example. This guy dives into code without thinking, then quickly Googles a solution and slaps it into the code base. Sure, you get that instant gratification, but what happens when you uh, run into an edge case that, that your pasted code doesn't cover, or when your hastily slapped together function needs to be reused? The frantic nights of refactoring aren't worth it, trust me. Neglecting personal life. Programming is challenging, it's captivating, it's addictive. But remember folks, we're humans before we're programmers. If you're spending every waking moment in front of the screen, disconnected from your family and loved ones, it's not only bad for your personal life, but also detrimental to your programming career. Stress and burnout are real and they can drastically impact your performance. Remember that recognizing these signs is the first step towards improvement. Programming might be a modern job, but it still follows the old rules. We need to balance the cognitive load on our minds with the increase in machine capacity and development productivity. It's all about knowing where you stand as a programmer and continually striving to meet your personal and organizational goals without compromising your work-life balance. So are you a programming hero? Or is there room for improvement? Either way, I hope this episode gave you some food for thought. Until next time, happy coding, folks.